One design decision that JavaScript probably made incorrect was the choice to have two bottom types that is null and undefined. This is something that trips up beginning JavaScript developers all the time. So in this lesson, we will look at the difference between the two and why as a JavaScript developer, you probably don't need to care about the difference as you can isolate both of them with a single check. So let's go. We start off by first taking a look at undefined. Undefined is something that the JavaScript runtime returns to you if it feels that something is uninitialized. As an example, we create a variable, but we don't provide it with any value. So if we try to read it, the JavaScript runtime gives us undefined. Now this form of uninitialization is something that can happen indirectly as well. For example, we have a function that takes an optional argument. So if we don't provide this optional argument, then the JavaScript runtime will give us the value undefined. In addition to optional function parameters coming through as undefined, if we don't have a return statement within our function, then the function is still going to return a value and the JavaScript runtime is going to use the value undefined and that is what we see in the console. Now there are a number of other uninitialized use cases as well. Let's look at one more example. We create a variable pointing to an object, but the object currently is completely empty. It doesn't have any members. So if we try to access one of its members, for example, the example member, then the JavaScript runtime will give us undefined. Slightly different from the concept of being uninitialized is the concept of being unavailable. It's not that we haven't gotten around to providing value, it's that we cannot provide a value. Let's look at how null manifests itself within the JavaScript runtime. We create this utility function called getVowels that simply takes an input string and matches it against AEIOU. Now, of course, if we invoke it with a string that does have vowels, we get an array that contains the matches, which in our case will be E and O. However, if we give it some string that does not have any vowels, then the JavaScript runtime match function will return null, and that is what we see in the program's output. In addition to various native JavaScript utilities returning null, it's made its way into various platform APIs as well. For example, within Node.js, when you call a function and you give it a callback, the convention is that the first argument to the callback will be an error that will be null in case an error does not exist. Here we are reading the file that we are currently executing and therefore we don't expect any error and you can see that the error object is null and the contents are the code within this file. Now even though null and undefined show up at different points within our code base, let's look at how we can unify them so we don't have to keep memorizing is it a null or is it undefined. You might be familiar with the double equal operator within JavaScript. A key feature of this operator is that only null and undefined are double equal to null and similarly only null and undefined are double equal to undefined. Any other falsy values such as a number or an empty string are not double equal to null and are not double equal to undefined. This means that we can use double equal to null as a check for if a value is null or undefined because this will return false for any other values other than null and undefined. Now you could also use double equal to undefined and I've seen people do that, but double equal to null is more conventional and is just shorter to type as well. Let's look at it a bit more closely with an example function. Here we have a function that takes a value that might be a string or null or undefined. Now if we want to isolate null and undefined, we can do that with a check double equal to null. And a fun fact is that the TypeScript compiler understands this as well. And when we hover over the value within the if block, you can see that TypeScript has isolated the types null and undefined. And within the else block, because it cannot be a null or undefined, TypeScript has isolated the type string. Now quite commonly, instead of checking if a value is null or undefined, you simply want to rule out null or undefined. As an example, you just want to go into an if block if the value isn't null and it isn't undefined. We can do that with a not equal to null. Now in this particular example, if the value isn't null and it isn't undefined, then clearly it must be a string and that is exactly what we see when we hover over the value within our IDE. So in summary, use double equal to null to isolate null and undefined and use not equal to null to exclude null and undefined. As you do more and more JavaScript software development, the technical difference between null and undefined starts to become less and less significant, which is why there is an official term called nullish, which is used to mean can be null or can be undefined. If you enjoyed this lesson, then smash that like and subscribe. If you're interested in more content, then here's a lesson that I've picked out for you that is on TypeScript lookup types. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one.